Today on Tech Trivia, we are talking about the capacitor plague. The capacitor plague was an event around 2002 to 2005 involving capacitors produced from about 1999 to 2003. This is an intriguing story about pushing the limits of chemistry and the industrial espionage used to try and get ahead of the competition in the world of low impedance capacitors. Low impedance capacitors were a bit of a dream at this time and they would allow for more aggressive designs They handled higher ripple currents and filters that are more effective with less stages. Low impedance capacitors did exist but they were not cheap or they didn't last very long. Using water as the primary electrolyte solvent was a solution for making cheap, low impedance capacitors, but water also caused the creation of aluminum hydroxide and premature failure in the capacitors. In the late 90s, Rubicon successfully commercialized a formula of additives that suppressed aluminum hydration. After this development, the story really gets interesting. A material scientist from Rubicon left the company to work for a competitor in China and was able to create a copy of the water-based electrolyte, which was then stolen by some staff to produce a cheap electrolyte, and it was bought in large quantities by some Taiwanese capacitor manufacturers. There was an issue, though. The formula the staff stole was incomplete and missing some of the additives that helped to stabilize the capacitors. These capacitors were cheap to the point where they were immediately snapped up by many manufacturers of consumer electronics, especially computer motherboards. To put it in perspective, Taiwanese aluminum electrolytic capacitors accounted for about 30% of the global shipments at one point. It took a bit for the problem to become apparent with the parts, but when problems did come, it was sometimes with a small dome on top of the capacitor, sometimes with a little leaking brown goo, and other times the capacitors would completely pop open with a good bang. The failures were widespread and drew the attention of academics and industry people at first, like Ed Sperling at EDN and the Passive Components Industry Magazine in 2002. By late 2002, the general public was beginning to see news articles about the mass failures of electronics, and electronics manufacturers were starting to feel the pain. Once all was said and done, companies saw massive losses. It reportedly cost Dell about $300 million, and HP supposedly had to scrap about all of their 2004 production. Apple also saw issues in their power supplies and motherboards on the G5 Max. The capacitors caused the premature failure of a wide variety of consumer electronics. Now most of the bad capacitors have worked their way out of the supply chain, but the lessons remain. You need to be sure that your suppliers are maintaining their end of the contract and not stooping to using non-approved suppliers to their own parts just to cut costs. Always be sure to be working with suppliers and distributors that maintain quality supply chains from the materials to the finished product.